everyone, welcome back. And today we have a special interview from the filmmakers behind Red Heaven, Lauren DeFilippo and Catherine Gorringe. I hope you enjoy. Uh, so hi, my name is Lauren DeFilippo and I am one of the directors and producers of Red Heaven. And my name is Catherine Gorringe and I'm the other director and producer of Red Heaven. Uh, so first off, I wanted to start off with, with is you really loved the film. Like it was way more than I expected. Um, and I say that because I didn't know what all went into the High Seas project. Um, so why don't we start off with what drew you all to this particular Mars story? Sure. So Lauren and I went to graduate school together in the uh, film and video documentary film and video program at Stanford. And, you know, we were living in the heart of Silicon Valley at this time when space exploration and traveling to Mars and putting humans on Mars had kind of reemerged into the public consciousness. And at the same time, it was this moment when climate change was becoming this very real threat to the future of humanity and people were starting to think of it that way and it felt like there was something there for us just wanting to interrogate this new fascination with going to space and sending humans to mars because now we forget that for a few decades no one was talking about human space exploration yeah. and so what does this dream of living on mars say about us as human beings about our culture and we'd seen a lot of films or we knew about a lot of films that had really looked into the technical aspects of getting humans to Mars or glorified this idea of human space exploration. And we were more interested in looking at the human side of the story and all of its complexity, like the intensity of living in a different place that's completely inhospitable to our species. And you're completely isolated from everything you've ever known, every person you've ever loved. And so we just felt that that could be really fascinating. Uh, and then we heard about high seas. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when it came to getting, uh, I guess, approval to be involved, um, I'm assuming that it was an, it was kind of a no at first, right? <laughs> like it's an yeah. actual science experiment. <laughs> um, what went into, I guess, mapping out your plans? Um, and kind of getting embedded with the experiment itself? And how much did you know about the experiment when you found out? Sure. So we had been researching, you know, once we knew that we wanted to make a film about this kind of cultural fascination that we were experiencing with Mars, we started um, looking into a lot of these simulations and there are a number of them that happen around the globe, which was pretty surprising news to us. Mm -hmm. uh, but we connected with this one called the High Seas um, Experiment that was happening in Hawaii on the big island um, of Hawaii, Mauna Loa Volcano, and started talking to the researchers there, just having phone calls with them. And, um, you know, asking if we could film. And of course they were like, no, this is a rigorous science experiment. We, we can't allow anyone inside. You know, these people are living in isolation. Um, there's no way. And we just were in contact with them and basically learned, um, I think just through like an article online that they were about to launch the longest experiment, which was a full year inside um, with six new crew members. And we just decided to go for it. So we kind of dropped what we were doing, um, bought two plane tickets to Hawaii and sort of just showed up. And, um, you know, over the course of a couple weeks, we got to kind of spend with the crew while they were training to go in, got to know the researchers a little bit more and basically were able to get access because the crew decided to participate with us. And, um, we essentially came up with a deal where we gave them cameras uh, for their year inside and they would shoot for us for the film. What are some of those challenges that come with relying on somebody else to take footage? Where did you, how much guidance did you give them? I'm assuming you wrote them some questions, but um, there are a lot of really good shots that get taken from inside. Uh, so how, what were some of those challenges and how did you overcome them or, uh, you know, 
uh, I'm trying to figure out how to ask this question exactly because like I have enough problem when I ask somebody to like go ask questions that I've given them to somebody else. I can't mm-hmm. imagine uh, having somebody else shoot all of my material. Well, some of the crew had experience shooting. Um, one of them was had a journalism degree, so she had definitely held a camera before and she like knew how to work a DSLR. So a lot of the really nice footage comes from that. And I think her kind of teaching the rest of the crew how to use cameras. We also just gave them point and shoot cameras. So we kind of liked the fact that everything's on auto. So you see the exposure changes and you see these automatic focus changes. And there's something that's kind of new and fresh and interesting about that as a filmmaker, that it's not this pristine footage, that it is kind of rugged. And, but what we really wanted was to capture real life. And so at first that, you know, they were able to Dropbox us footage, like small amounts of footage from time to time. So we did have the opportunity to give them feedback and be in dialogue and they can send emails. So we were able to send shot lists and interview questions and just different requests from them Mm -hmm. and have a conversation about the footage. So when we were first getting footage from them, sometimes it would be like a six second clip of sipper in on the treadmill and six seconds is i mean you know it would be the fastest cut documentary (laughs) in the world if we made it with that so we basically were like just put the camera on a tripod when you guys are having dinner for example and just let it roll and i think that's when we really started to hit our stride when they just kind of would set up the camera and live their lives. Uh, And then of course we have this amazing interview footage where they kind of talk to each other and talk to camera. I guess, uh, I guess kind of to on that, what all did you all do for like, while they, since they were kind of doing all the footage and kind of emailing you, what did you all do like during the experiment, I guess, try to get this moving? Uh, Well, we were trying to finance the film on a lot of (laughs) levels. Um, and so we, you know, we in kind of in the interim ran a Kickstarter campaign to be able to actually edit the footage once they came out. And of course, you know, all the other things that go into making a film, music, animation, graphics, um, and just, you know, how we could pay for a crew to do that. And um, then simultaneously, we also were... Um, well, we were, we were initially thinking um, that there would be other voices in the film um, when we first set out. So we kind of thought that there would be other interviews uh, that might appear of kind of what we call like, the philosophers. So a lot of like sci-fi writers and um, people who had really thought about our cultural fascination with Mars and whose writing was really inspirational to us. So we filmed a number of those also in the meantime, Um, you know, great people like Mary Roach and um, sci-fi writer Kim Stanley Robinson. They were all really influential in our thinking about this film. Um, But, you know, when it came time to edit, it just, what was most compelling was really being in this 365 days um, of isolation, which is ironic to say now. with these people and so they these these voices kind of fell by the wayside um and we really just leaned into the group experience and then also you will see in the film a lot of those landscapes we shot ourselves um so there's a little bit of kind of the outside environment um we we did that and the shots are really beautiful i actually think the one that 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 kind of hit me the most was where you have, I forget her name, but she was talking about how people need to be careful when they're walking outside and you need to understand that it can be dangerous. And then you have the shot of the two scientists sliding down mm-hmm. the, the <laughs> rock. <laughs> and it was one of those moments where there was there was a very, I, I want to commend you guys for showcasing both the, the epic scale of how the landscape looked, but also there was this, there was this humanity behind like almost all of these different pieces and different moments, whether it was people contradicting each other or uh, maybe talking a little shade about their families, not, <laughs> not, not talking to them. And were there parts that you felt that you had to almost not include so maybe somebody said something that you know might not have wanted their family to hear or anything like that like how did you balance 
really intimate personal moments with maybe showing a little bit too much? First of all, the crew would like everyone to know that they were not just playing around on the rocks, that, <laughs> that they were doing tons of geological tasks and research, and they were really hard at work. They were like, you kind of emphasized us like playing <laughs> sliding on the rocks a little too much. Um, they were working very diligently <laughs> while they were inside. Which is, which is, we're joking, but it's true. Um, so now I forgot the question about, oh, what we left out and, you know, um, well, I think they, you know, it's a testament to who they are as people that they were really honest on camera and, um, and comfortable with what we chose. And I think as filmmakers, you know, as documentary filmmakers, we're always kind of negotiating, like wanting to get the highest level of drama and really wanting to get raw human emotion and not wanting to betray our subject's trust. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think we just found, uh, it was based on what they were offering on screen, we knew was fair game and that they were willing to share with the world. And so there really wasn't anything that we were like, oh, we can't put this in. Uh, they knew that they were offering it to a documentary as soon as it was recorded. So. Um, but it was interesting as soon as we started to share it with the crew sometimes they were like i can't even believe we shot that i don't remember like why did i shoot that <laughs> um so with a couple years you know it's been a couple years since the experiment so i think they the experience of being inside informed what they shot and as it got more difficult they become more raw on camera which i see i think you see in the film yeah. was there anything particular oh, what you say I was gonna say, was there anything particular that you just told that happened, I guess, that ended up getting filmed that you did not expect to happen? Well, we didn't expect those two to fall in love, which <laughs> spoiled <laughs> yeah. um, And, you know, of course we were thrilled about it as documentary <laughs> filmmakers. Um, I'm trying to, I, we just really, you know, we didn't know what to expect. And I think that that was what was so fascinating about it is like what really happens when you put people together under these really intense circumstances and um, how do they cope? And I think, you know, ultimately in making the film, we came to realize that, you know, it's really about what are our basic needs as humans? What are the things that we really need to survive and to thrive? And so I think we were kind of just trying to to look for that in, in all of the characters and figure out how we could kind of tell that story through their experience. And I think the stuff that we were really attracted to that surprised us were not the kind of quote unquote real world Mars moments that I think people might expect when if you just heard the log line of a film like this, but rather the kind of global, like deeply profoundly human moments like um, Cyprian, the Paris oh, terrorist yeah. attacks happening while he's in the dome, which is such an insane thing to happen for any person, let alone someone who's isolated from everyone they know and it's happening in their hometown um and yeah just also like there's still love and there's discord but these kind of moments that rise above all those the petty human like smaller human things were uh we could never have predicted but that's really what we ended up kind of basing the film on i will say kate called that from the moment she first saw it she I they're did. gonna fall in love they she gives him a look when he's playing ukulele <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a look there. Well, I'm glad to hear that because we very carefully planted the left <laughs> It worked. <laughs> I saw that look and I was like, oh, I see what's happening. And she likes him. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think, too, one of the things that I know Matt and I talked about after we watched the film and even during the film was looking at some of the scarier moments, um, like the collapse that happens, um, or, or when, I uh, can't, I uh, forget her name, so I'm really bad with the names. <laughs> Christiana. Uh, yeah, with Christiana, okay. when she is, she's with her suit. Um, 
what from because I know you all could shoot while you were outside. Um, were you told any specifics around those potential scarier moments like that? Because um, I know the audio you use, uh, there's an explanation of you know enduring suffering to get to get results. Um, do you know what the whole process was behind that and when somebody would step in? Are you talking about as far as the um, researchers and the missions involvement? Exactly. Yeah. Like uh, whether it was from you or from mission control, like when I'm uh, just very curious of uh, seeing that on film, like what the contingency plans were in place if something really bad happened. Yeah. So the researchers are there, I think a few people on island on the big island and then there are a few in honolulu because the experiment is run through the university of hawaii mm -hmm. so they're constantly in touch like there's an emergency phone in the dome in case anything really serious happens and i think they even so shana who's the physician in the film um she had told us that she could potentially like call in a helicopter if there was a really serious injury so they definitely had contingency plans in the mix in case anything really serious happened they could like immediately pull the plug and of course they're on earth so they could just yeah. like run out of the dome and but they are a distance from civilization it would be like several miles walking so uh so yeah they were they were definitely like it, there was a line of communication with what was called mission support rather than mission control because on mars you can't be controlled no, yeah. <laughs> because because the communication is delayed 20 minutes. So uh, so it's mission support, but they could step in if anything serious happened. So I think I feel like uh, we have to kind of mention it and, and you kind of mentioned uh, isolation for 365 days. Mm -hmm. um, this is this film is relevant because i mean obviously we still have eyes towards space and towards human travel but at the same time our world is also being thrown into this series of self-isolations and self-quarantines um do you feel like you've kind of like brought some i guess how would i explain this maybe some information of what people can look to or how people can deal with this type of stress in, in y'all's film or even just what you all have learned from watching these, you know, these, these researchers um, for so long. Yeah, well, we could never have expected yeah. <laughs> um, to release the film <laughs> under these circumstances. And it, yeah, it just feels so timely on so many levels right now. I mean, I think it's crazy. I was just, you know, I'm living in Brooklyn and I haven't, I hadn't left my apartment in about three days. I just went outside to take a walk around my block. And I was thinking to myself, the line where Christiana talks about leaving the dome in the spacesuit and just saying, being able to walk free and without restriction, yeah. you know, and just like being able to appreciate going for a walk on a whole new level. Um, so I definitely have a much greater appreciation for what the six of them went through. Um, and I think, you know, I think we are, are kind of seeing some, some basic lessons to take away just simply about, you know, trying to exercise daily and, and really give yourself a routine because otherwise you do kind of fall into this time fog that I think a lot of us are experiencing with like, what day is it now? <laughs> yeah, and the first line of the film kind of gets to it where it basically says, you know, human beings can endure so much. We're so adaptable and you don't necessarily need to be able to go to go on a hike in the forest or see your friends and family all the time. You know, we go out, yeah. we go without these things so often. But when you're truly isolated and all those you're limited from all those things, it opens up this question of what really do we need fundamentally? What things can't we live without? And I think we're all kind of experiencing that. It's like, wow, we actually don't, we can press pause on a lot of things in our lives without, you know, immediately going crazy or anything like that. And that's kind of what the film, you know, tries to explore. And, you know, the other thing about us all being in isolation too is that there, 
they always talk about, the researchers talk about with an experiment like this, there's kind of four quarters that the experience fits into. And this is for a, a potential Mars mission, but this is also descriptive of uh, missions to Antarctica. They've actually looked at journals from missions over the past hundred years and looked at how they fall into these four quadrants where the first quarter, everyone's feeling great and there's like all this possibility. And I think we're all experiencing that now that it's like, you know what, I'm going to start these three new hobbies. And <laughs> um, it's actually really fun to like clean and organize my house or, you know, what, whatever it is for each person. But the dreaded third quarter syndrome that people talk about is when the end is still not near. It's still so far away. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. And the monotony, the honeymoon period is over and the monotony has really set in mm -hmm. that um, people really start to have a difficult time emotionally, physically, psychologically. And then the fourth quarter, everything picks up when people realize that it's going to end eventually. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, how long this lasts and we'll all need to support each other if it, it extends several more months. Um, I guess kind of just out of curiosity, um, <laughs> were either of you in, would ever want to be in one of these experiments or do you think you could make it for the 365 days <laughs> after all this stuff? That's a great question because we're very split on this. <laughs> <laughs> um absolutely not there's <laughs> no way in hell i was there right there when they unzipped that dome and the smell oh. that came out of it was like the worst thing um and so no i um i would opt out of that but Catherine, on the other hand I that think sounds like a resounding for no for more <laughs> <laughs> um well since i was i edited Red Heaven so I was just in the film on a daily basis so I have had many dreams where I'm mm -hmm. in the dome or somehow I signed up for the experiment or like sometimes we're really on Mars but anyway I feel like I could do it <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I could. could definitely do it I have no doubt I think I would it would be really hard but I think it would be hard for almost anyone yeah and, and now we're kind of all living it. So I guess we'll find out. <laughs> At least we have Netflix here, though. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that really helps. True. Yeah. And FaceTime. And yeah, they were just on this delay that I can't imagine. Of, gosh, just an added thing. Yeah, no real-time conversations for a year is huge. Yeah. Um, so I think the last thing that I want to ask really is what what were some of the biggest things that you've learned, whether it was filmmaking wise personally or just from watching uh, from watching them go through this experiment? What are some of your big uh, takeaways? Well, I think for me, this isn't necessarily about the our subjects per se. But when we started this experiment, we were so skeptical of sending humans to Mars that it just seemed ridiculous. And especially amidst all of the challenge that, challenges that we're facing on Earth and getting to know these scientists and really getting to peel back the uh, curtain on an experiment like this, I think I've really changed my mind on that. And while I'm not pro colonization and terraforming Mars, which I still think is pretty ridiculous, <laughs> the type, the science that we could do and the things that we could learn from having a human being walk the surface of Mars and being able to explore and send back information is just completely tremendous. And there's so much to learn about uh, just comparing our planets and our climates that can help us learn about the climate of Earth and what to expect in the age of climate change. And that's been a huge takeaway for me is just having this closeness to a real science experiment about uh, human space exploration. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I would just say too, you know, this was both of our first time directing a, a feature documentary. So, you know, we just learned so much about about filmmaking and, and really about 
storytelling. And I think that um, we just really feel so honored to kind of be able to tell the story of these six people. And um, we, we just really wanted to give people an immersive experience and you know that's really what we set out to do and 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 that's 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 challenging in you know the documentary world and so I think we I think we kind of learned so much about Mars and about science and about psychology and living in isolation um, but that it was also just so important for us in terms of like our our craftsmanship and our our filmmaking chops so really grateful to have the experience I think for me, the last thing that I kind of want to know, which I guess is whether it's spoiler, are they still together? <laughs> <laughs> we actually, <laughs> we, uh, we don't know. Oh. <laughs> we do know that they're at the very, they're very private about their relationship yes. and we love them for that. Um, but they are on very good terms and they're actually, I think, collaborating on a, project christiana is in germany building a real mars habitat and looking even at like ventilation systems she's an engineer so um and cyprian was doing some work on that so they're definitely still friends and collaborating romance unknown <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, Cyprian was supposed to come with us to film the or to screen the film in Copenhagen at um, the great CPH festival there. And um, we were like had this whole plan to ask him, you know, <laughs> the details then. And we unfortunately weren't able to do that. But um, but yeah, everyone wants to know. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I guess where can, you know, where can people watch Red Heaven? When is it set to come out? Um, you know, I, I know it's a kind of really tumultuous time when it comes to, you know, to launching films and stuff. So uh, do you have any information on that? Well, we can't really talk about it yet, but hopefully we'll be available sometime this year or next. Um, and hopefully there will be festivals in the fall that we can screen at too. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, I don't know if you all are online at all or if you all want to plug your handles or anything like that. Um, yeah, we are basically on all the social media platforms at, um, at Red Heaven Film. So, yeah follow us and we can definitely keep people posted um you know once we're ready to make our um kind of release and broadcast plans public but really excited to share the film with everyone awesome well thank awesome. you guys so much yeah thank you so much yeah thank you